Joe Trouble back to the 80s To the movies he fondly recall With Annie and Tom Cruise And Sly and Bruce Willis Before he went ball When neo-Nazi terrorists wipe out a secret UN laboratory in Mozambique, it's the Delta Force who lock up and load for action. Well, the best thing for me about Delta Force 1 is it's got Winston from Ghostbusters in. I mean, come on, Winston from Ghostbusters! This movie's gonna rock. Okay, unfortunately it doesn't rock because Winston doesn't have his proton pack from the Ghostbusters movie. Damn. So all the Delta Force units turn up and they're all essentially invincible. They all get shot at point blank range and they never get hit. They take out all the bad guys in a single shot. The film's broken up by showing segments of the bad guys talking to each other in really bad South African accents, some general who sits in a room alone talking to himself, and Captain Skip Lang and Winston arguing with one another all the time. What a load of crap this film's turning out to be. And there was me thinking it was going to be amazing. Why does Captain Lang always squint? And why has he got a gravelly voice like Rod Stewart singing? It's awful. It was your job. No, it's my job, Major. Something else the film's riddled with is stock footage from the Navy or RAF. It's just terrible. It doesn't even fit into the continuity of the film at all. I mean, this scene's hilarious. Some stock footage of a plane coming in with audio over the top saying, Hey, look, my plane's here. See you later, guys. What a... It's fucking... Oh, man, it's just a joke. Well, if we fast forward most of the film, we get to this scene. They're always trying to be careful and using tactics and whatnot, but here they just get to the village and they walk in carefree. They get surrounded. And Skip Lang goes, oh shit. I mean, what did you expect for them just to come out with their hands in the air and say, yes, we surrender? Give me a break, man. They all run away from the gunfire of the bad guys and then the rest of the Delta Force unit comes storming in. The actual jumps and grunt while being shot have never been more over the top. I mean, check this stuff out. <laughs> Hiding behind a small wooden fence amongst the cabbages surely does not protect you, but hey, if you're a member of the Delta Force unit, then you're protected to no end. We get more theatrics and even chickens thrown around for good measure. I mean, I mean, come on, this is fucking terrible. Cap leaves another three films after this to talk about. I mean, this member of the Delta Force unit gets shot in the chest, and I'm sure he's going to live. Oh, no, he's died. Oh, dear. So they're not invincible after all. And there was me thinking there were like a band of Arnold Schwarzeneggers running around, carefree, like in Commando. Coming towards the end, the bad guys throw the virus to one another. It drops in the water, they crash and blow up. So Captain Skip Lang jumps in the water and somehow surfaces holding the container. Fuck off! They're told to call off the attack because of some bollocks like it not being politically feasible. I fucking hate politics. Best line of the movie. This film's riddled with great dialogue and lines and plenty of engaging conversations. I mean, check this one out for example between two of the bad guys. The virus is missing. The case must have fallen into the river, sir. I, I didn't realise. So believable. Winston starts looking at this test tube, not knowing if it's broken or not, to see if they've been contaminated by the virus. Well, it's obviously broken because it's dripping, you idiot. Can't you see? For God's sake. Why don't you do something useful like get your proton pack out and go busting ghosts? If you can't tell that a fucking test tube's cracked, then you're obviously no good in the army, so get back to being a ghostbuster. So, we get to the final battle, and there's fireworks galore, which are meant to be explosions, but you can tell there's fireworks being set off. It's just so pathetic. Winston's obviously not interested in shooting me. I mean, look at his face. He's not interested at all. He's just going through the motions and hoping to get his paycheck as soon as possible. I think he just wishes he had his proton pack back. Oh, look, now they're even using water guns. Oh, fucking hell, this is terrible. Then bad guy dies. He does a really long grunt, grabs hold of Winston's leg, and then it ends. <laughs> And that's the first one over and done with. Operation Delta Force 2, Mayday. 
The Delta unit face a battle for their lives when on a mission to rescue two downed airmen during the Gulf War in this explosive all-action thriller. Captain Skip Lang is back for a second dose of Delta Force bullshit. But wait, it's not even the same guy. I really hate it when they change actors. I mean, the original Captain Lang was a joke, but this guy is even fucking worse. <laughs> this film's really terrible. It's more theatrical dives, plenty of slow motion action shots, invincible Delta Force members, and plenty of terrible one liners, such as these classics. Got a smoke screen. Party time, gentlemen. Let's party! Okay, boys. Time to load and lock. And rock and roll. I mean, this is how bad this film is. This guy's gun makes a sound that could fit into a fucking Star Wars movie or something shit like that. Bobby, six o'clock! The odds in this movie aren't exactly fair. I mean, 500 guys who have got tanks and miniguns against six Delta Force members. 500's not enough. Come on, this is the Delta Force. Like the Fourth of July, guys. Okay, yeah, because I really remember celebrating the Fourth of July by exploding buildings up and seeing guys jumping into the water and then blowing up themselves. Why is this guy shooting his gun all over? Look! It's not even aiming, it's just waving it around aimlessly. Retard. After 15 minutes of bullshit action, the guy they've rescued sums up the Delta Force unit. Um, well, I wouldn't call them great, but there you go. So, yeah, nothing else really happens apart from this. The film really does go downhill. So there's some shit storyline about nuclear submarines and boats, which is really lame. The Delta Force unit obviously kick ass. I mean, I fast forwarded most of this movie, I didn't even bother watching it because it was just crap. And it's just pathetic. So there we go. Operation Delta Force 3, clear target. It's explosive action all the way as a Delta Commando team are called into combat an undeniable force of the world's most powerful crime lords. It's the same old story as before. Could have the writers come up with a decent storyline? Look at this guy taking a piss. As if he couldn't see the Delta Force members in the water. He's clearly looking at them and they're looking at him and it's not exactly dark. Well, he gets killed anyway. Oh, and just so you know, Captain Lang is back for a third outing. But, as before, he's undergone drastic plastic surgery, so it's completely different. Why not just invent a new character? So we get another explosive opening, see stupid fireworks, diving and jumping and theatrics that professional footballers would be proud of. And, of course, there's plenty of bad acting on display. Say happy. Happy. Love me! Say birthday. Because some fat ass bureaucrat decided that fighting drugs is a fucking flavor of the goddamn month. Let's do it. It's time to rock and roll. This guy's just seen a bomb, yet he's got a good 10 seconds before it explodes. But what does he do? He just sits there hoping that shouting out a few swear words will protect him from the explosion. Idiot. <laughs> Like the second film, they all seem pretty invincible, except the guy who got blown up by the bomb, and they've got to infiltrate another submarine, and blah blah blah, and this is bad. This guy saves the day and tells his captain to go feed his cat or something. <laughs> what? Feed my cat, Cap. But he doesn't die anyway, he washes up on the beach at the end, so... Yay, good for him. Operation Delta Force 4, Deep Fault. When a group of seismologists are taken prisoner in Yugoslavia, the Delta Force, led by Skip Lang, are sent to rescue them, but they soon realise that this is more than just a hostage situation. Ugh, I'm really losing the will to live now. I mean, this film starts out like... well, Delta Force 1, 2 and 3. They even blow up dummies for Christ's sake. I mean, what kind of budget were they running on here? They're definitely running on empty, as there's no cool theatrical dives or explosions or huge firework type things going off. And probably the strangest thing is how Mac from Delta Force 3 has transformed miraculously into Captain Skip Lang. Words can't do his justice, I mean I'm just totally flabbergasted. Skipping right to the very end, because the rest of the movie is just boring, um, the Delta Force team conquer all, but the wonderful Skip Lang is killed. 
it's a bit of a bummer for a guy to be killed off after having so many faces playing, but hopefully it's put a lid on the series. Oh no, there's a fifth one! There's no Skip Lang in it though, so it'll just be bullshit. So, that's a look at all the Delta Force films. The first one starts off pretty bad, but you can watch it. The second one's worse, the third one's terrible, and the fourth one is suicide inducing, and probably once you've seen Skip Lang get killed, that might even push you over the edge, so my advice is not to watch any of these films. Because they're fucking awful.